Hi friends, welcome to the first video of Current World. Today I'm going to share my Elearn Plus exam experience and a few tips to help you guys. Friends, I started preparing for my Elearn Plus journey when I was in year 4 and to be honest with you guys, it was not easy for me when I started and bumpy at times, but I had so much help from my tutor and my parents. It's a completely new experience for me because I have never prepared for any exams before. But for the Elearn Plus, you guys need to focus on maths, English, verbal reasoning and non-verbal reasoning. And when I started in year 4, my tutor gave me few, a few pieces of homework each week to complete, but that will gradually increase over time. When my homework was increased, I found it difficult to complete them on time, but in a way, this helped me understand my weaknesses. I was making a lot of mistakes when I was doing my homework, and it is okay to make mistakes whilst doing your homework, but it is not okay when you repeat those mistakes again. Here are some of the problems that I had. I was easily getting distracted, I wasn't focused, and I didn't have any confidence. My tutor and my parents were able to identify my problems as I kept on repeating the same mistakes again and again. If you guys are also repeating the same mistakes again and again, you may also be encountering the problems that I had. If you want to overcome these problems, all you need to do is to focus on what you are doing. You may find it a bit difficult in the beginning because you have to work after school and even in the weekends, but eventually you will get used to it. If you focus on your homework, you will use less time on your corrections. But if you don't, you will need to spend more time on your corrections and lose your playtime. By mid year 5, you will start to do practice papers, which give you an idea of how the exams are laid out but this can also help you to identify your pain points. You may also want to sit some mock tests to make you ready for the actual exams and also to help you ex understand where you are in terms of time management and performance. There are two exam formats used by grammar schools, CEM and GL. GL covers maths, English, verbal reasoning and non-verbal reasoning, whereas CEM covers numerical reasoning, verbal reasoning and non-verbal reasoning. The verbal reasoning of CEM covers all the skills that are being used in the GL English test, whereas the numerical reasoning test of CEM uses the main skills used by the GL maths test. Concentration Concentration is one of the keys to success. It is very important that you should not let your eyes go off your exam paper. When you're in the exam hall, there are many things that can distract you. For example, you may have friends in the same exam hall, or you might have a friend sitting next to you. Another thing is when you get a person trying to ask the examiner a question, or maybe you can hear or see something that is going on outside of the exam hall. But all these distractions should not, should not affect your concentration. And you should always keep in mind that you only have one chance. And you should always remember that each second of that exam that you are writing is very precious. Persevere. You come across a question that you find a bit difficult or you, you're thinking, oh, that's a, bit, that's a bit hard, I can't answer it very quickly and you're very conscious of time. What you should do is circle around that question number and totally it's fine, you, your paper will not get d disqualified, all right? Trust me. You move on and when you have finished the test completely, you come to that circled question and if you have time, you answer that question. You should completely utilize that time for it. And then after that, after that, if you can't answer it, it is totally fine, all right? If you couldn't answer it, if you couldn't get the opportunity to, because it is, it is like fine if you get a few answers wrong than getting all of your answers wrong in your exam paper. Labeling. When you come across your comprehension in your exam paper, what you should do is label all the key information in that comprehension text, especially when you have a massive one. It's okay if you have a, if you have a, um, 
a small comprehension text, you you can still label it because that each word in that comprehension text will still have a meaning to it. But you should only highlight all the key information that you want for your answers. And trust me, it really helped. Because when I did one of my 11 plus exams, I had, they gave me like this massive comprehension text, which, which will pro approximately take 10 minutes to read. And I underlined all the key information for like, for like the, for my answers. And, and, uh, and when I came to a question, I, and it said to refer to the text, I went to my text and I skim and scan for which information that I that I needed to have and I got it in about five seconds and if I haven't if I hadn't labeled my text I would have spent the same 10 minutes again reading it and don't worry if you if you are labeling and if you're like like I said in the last tip it is totally fine to label label like label your answers because the examiners say to label it okay and also you should also label your questions because your questions also have very key information in them especially in english and math questions because they have so much inv information especially in the for the maths and the english when the english have when you have like six mark questions and for the maths you have like reasoning so it's very important to label everything that you think should be important for your answers practice practice makes it perfect when i first got to do my first 11 plus paper i scored really bad in it because i was very unfamiliar with the format of that paper this might not be the same for these for you guys but it was very bad for me when i when my tutor got to know this news she gave me more papers to do each week and more and more papers and weeks passed by and slowly when weeks passed by my my scores became higher and when my scores became higher i was becoming more ready for my actual 11 plus exams time management time management is very important for your 11 plus exams especially for the cm styled papers because those papers have time sections and those timings that they give you are very hard to keep up with so especially with your comprehension sections this is when labeling and practice comes in to help you after all that for example you're in a section and your time is nearly ending and you have five questions left what you should do is to like mark anything and don't leave them blank because you never know if you get them right be cool this is the last tip for you guys that i have it is good to be serious about your 11 plus exams, but it is not good to be stressed about it. And especially when you're in the exam hall, because that will not lead you to good things. You have tried your best. You have prepared the maximum that you can do. You have pulled your socks off. Now, what you need to do is just take it easy and just think positive for your results. So guys, this is my 11 plus experience and I hope my tips will help you guys with the 11 plus exams. I'm wishing you all the best of luck for your exams and, and hope you guys will get really good results. And if you have any queries, please put them in the comment section below. I'll try my best to answer them. And so, and also please subscribe my, to, to my channel and like it. And don't forget to share this video to your family and loved ones. Bye.